Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vradenberg. This is the series that helps you to learn new habits to optimize your life in order to stay sane in this crazy world. This is episode number 71, and the topic for today is doing the right thing. The suggestion for today's topic came from the Life Habits Facebook page, which is available at facebook.com slash lifehabits with no space between the two words. And in this case, it was a suggestion made by Karen. Karen said, always enjoy your podcasts. I was wondering if you would be able to do one on ethics. So I gave that a bit of thought and thought, yes, that's a very good topic to do a session on. And so here we go with a set of quotes to start us off first. W. Clement Stone said, have the courage to say no. Have the courage to face the truth. Do the right thing because it is right. These are the magic keys to living your life with integrity. Henry Kravis said, if you don't have integrity, you have nothing. You can't buy it. You can have all the money in the world, but if you're not a moral and ethical person, you really have nothing. Bertrand Russell said, Without civic morality, communities perish. Without personal morality, their survival has no value. Mark Twain said, It is curious, curious that physical courage should be so common in the world and moral courage so rare. H. Jackson Brown Jr. said, Live so that when your children think of fairness and integrity, they think of you. So some great thoughts to get us thinking on this very broad and potentially deep topic of doing the right thing and thinking about morality and ethics, as Karen had suggested. Now, where do we get our sense of right and wrong. We develop our sense of morality and ethics over our lifetime, and heavily also when we're quite young. It's influenced by a variety of factors, but mostly things like our experiences with our family, any education that we've had, any exposure to religions, and a whole range of experiences with peers and others. So this personal sense of right and wrong, it's not a dichotomous, you're either right or you're wrong, in my view. I think it's more of a continuum, with you needing to determine where on that continuum any issue falls for you. And I would like to suggest that it truly is a personal issue. I think some others will argue that, oh, any issue is black and white and it's categorical and it's just right or wrong and full stop, nothing else to discuss about it. When in actual fact, I think that in many cases, many of the kinds of issues that we come across aren't so black and white. There's lots of gray areas and there's this notion of a true continuum that we and we alone in making these kinds of decisions need to understand, need to analyze, and need to then decide where on that continuum any particular issue falls for us. Now, what's relevant to this whole issue of doing the right thing and morality and ethics? It can be any number of issues, things that come up at work, things that come up at school, things that come up at home, in relationships, anything that makes you stop and think, hmm, what's the right thing to do here? And where you really want to step back and think and consider and weigh carefully what you want to do in this case. So I'd suggest, and I'm continuing on here with the suggestion many episodes ago now by Ulrich that we should focus on just a shorter list of things that are at the heart and are the essence of the topic rather than necessarily being held to a fixed number of items to think through as I used to go through in many of the previous podcasts where I had a top 10 list. 
So you see there's really four things here that we really need to make our way through on any issue. And yet the first one, before we even get into the factors to consider, is to identify the central ethical issue concerning the decision that you need to make. And then I would suggest that that you need to think through all of the options with regard to that issue using the following four factors or criteria. The first is legal, professional, and other institutional rules or regulations regarding the issue. I mean, is this thing that you're thinking about really against some very clearly specified set of rules that have been laid out by governments, you know, professional organizations, institutions that you may be part of. You really need to factor that in first. And I would suggest that that should weigh quite heavily on your decision in terms of where this particular issue falls in terms of your continuum. But it's still the case that it has to be your own personal assessment as well. But this first one is one that is sort of table stakes. It's one that you need to really consider deeply first. And in certain cases, you may not even be aware of what some of the rules, you know, may be. And so you may need to investigate further Uh, And again, the issues we're talking about here are so wide that we really even can't get into any really particularly good examples that would be relevant to all of you. But whatever the issue that's on your mind with regard to this notion of trying to do the right thing, investigate it first if it's not readily apparent to you uh, whether there are any legal, professional, or institutional rules with regard to it. Secondly, think about it from your own personal value system. What's your particular perspective from your own internal philosophical religious your own sense of fairness and conscience and your own sense of integrity is the decision and the continuum that you're considering here is your own personal view such that it is something that you think as the quote by h jackson brown jr talked about is this something that is in line with your own sort of identity, your own sense of self, your own sense of this is, if this were to be described to other people, that this is something that you did. Is this something that you would be proud of based on the decision that you made in this situation? So, you know, where does the issue fall with regard to your own personal, you know, value system? The third thing to consider is to... Consider the potential consequences for you and others and others that you particularly care about. So quite independent of kind of the legal and professional and institutional rules thing we talked about or your own personal value system, you know, they may push you in particular directions on this issue, but think too about what are going to be the outcomes of this decision, you know, for you yourself? What are the ramifications down the road, either short term or longer term for you, but also how's it going to affect other people that you care about? And that's often the case that when you're right in the middle of one of these issues and you really feel strongly that you you want to do something in a particular direction, it's directly right at the heart of what you are as a person in terms of your own personal value system, but you've got a major challenge that it's going to cause major pain to somebody else that you know and care about. And again, as I say, each of these factors you need to weigh. It's not like any one of them needs to be the most important in terms of you making a decision entirely on the basis of the impact that that decision will make on somebody else you care about. I'm not suggesting at all that you take that black and white approach that basically says, oh, well, that's the overriding issue that you need to take into account. And therefore, that's the way to make your decision. No, not at all. This is a complicated business, this notion of knowing what the right thing is to do. And so I'm suggesting here that looking at the consequences for yourself and for others you care about is another important factor that you've got to step back and analyze and determine what that impact will be so you can weigh that with the other factors that we've been talking about as well.
And the last issue is, or the last thing to think about, is one that kind of summarizes all the others that I've been describing thus far. And this is one that I think sums up best how you should weigh the importance of all of the other items together and determine if you were to imagine each of those factors on a continuum and where they would fall on your analysis of what is more right or more wrong to do in this case, this is one that will bring clarity to the decision that you need to make in terms of the other factors. And that simply is asking yourself, will you be able to sleep soundly knowing that you did the right thing for now and in the future? So whether it's legal, professional, or institutional issues, or your personal value system, the potential consequences for you and others, you factor all of those in. You now have come up with your conclusion that says, you know what, weighing all those factors, this is the decision that I think I should make. Then imagine yourself lying in bed. Let's say you've made the decision, you've done the activity, or whatever it is that is being influenced by this analysis of the right and the wrong thing to do. And you're now lying in bed afterwards and you're thinking of all of those other factors and comprehensively thinking about how would you feel. You now are just dealing with your own thoughts, your own reactions, your own emotion after the fact. Imagine how you will feel. And if you're entirely comfortable with the way that you're about to make this decision, and that you know that you're going to be able to sleep soundly as a result of it, then that is the right decision to make. If, on the other hand, you've done some analysis that really suggests you want to go a particular direction, and you really want to do it because you want to make some particular statement, or you want to influence people in a particular way, but if it really comes down to it, when you're lying there, absorbed in your own thoughts before you're going to sleep at night, and you think, hmm, I don't feel comfortable with that. Or you imagine a particular person's reaction to it. Or you imagine that it isn't quite as legal as you, you know, while it's maybe a gray area, you really think it's something you're not going to feel comfortable with. Or the decision just isn't entirely in line with what you would like to be known for in terms of the decision with regard to your own personal value system and the identity that you have for yourself. Like I say, think about how you'll feel all in your own thoughts, particularly at night, and whether you'll be able to sleep soundly with regard to that issue. So again, very simple set of items to work through for virtually any topic that you may come across that you want to have some insight into what might be the moral or ethical doing the right thing decision. And I hope that helps in your analysis of these types of issues. I wanted to just, before finishing up, as we often do, you know, I get a fair bit of feedback now from a number of you in the variety of places you can provide feedback. So I would already mentioned facebook.com slash life habits. We're on that Facebook page talking lately about prioritizing a number of topics that we have that are candidates for topics coming up. And so I've asked the listeners who are uh, subscribed to that page to contribute to the prioritization of some of those items. We're also talking about some of the topics further there as well. So I encourage you to go, you know, there. I also wanted to ask, and this, some of the discussion happened there too on the Facebook page, but I'd like to ask you to send me an email to lifehabits at gmail.com and just tell me briefly how, where, and when you listen to the podcast. I try to visualize you in trying to deliver these podcasts as personally as I can to the listeners. And it really helps me if I have a notion of, do you listen to these podcasts on, you know, a, a mobile device with personal headphones on? Do you listen to it on uh, speakers in your living room or kitchen? So the how, how you listen, also where, you know, is it the case that you do it by 
listening while you're on a treadmill or out, uh, you know, running or uh, driving in your car, walking home from work, in bed before you go to sleep. And and also the, the when, you know, is it the first thing in the morning you're listening to this stuff? Uh, is it the case that you listen to while you're unwinding at night? I'd love to have some more information from you. So uh, some of this stuff would be great if you could just send that to the lifehabits at gmail account so I get a better insight into the ways in which you are listening to the words that I provide and record and send along to you. I also read everything uh, that anybody does send, whether it's in iTunes, in the various iTunes stores across the globe, or on the Facebook page, or via email. And I try to, since you've gone through the effort of providing that feedback, try to also fairly briefly summarize an edited version of some of the highlights of the feedback that you've sent as well toward the end of these podcast episodes as well. So I don't cover everything that everybody sent, but I do want to give you a little bit of a sense back again of what all your fellow listeners have been saying as well. So let me just summarize very quickly some of the feedback that's come in the last while. Some feedback on the lifehabits.net website from Crazy Suburban Mom wrote, I love Life Habits. It's my favorite podcast hands down. And I wrote up a review on it on my blog. So thanks for that, Suburban Mom. And from Henry, he says, I've been listening to your podcast for more than six months now. I find it very helpful. It is very positive and gives me a clear sense of direction. I always make sure that I listen to one of your podcasts every day. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much, Henry, for listening and providing that feedback. An email from Michael says, I'm an avid listener to your podcast, and I wanted to send you a short note regarding an app I use for listening and subscribing to podcasts. I had mentioned a few episodes ago that there is a challenge in using the music app on the iOS devices and that you can't subscribe to podcasts uh, directly in it and the like. And so I also described a little bit of the apps that I was aware of and was told about that you can use instead. But Michael said, I use the Instacast app for the iPhone and iPad. It is a great way to listen to podcasts and does a good job of letting you know when a new podcast is available. I think it's a good alternative to iTunes for managing your podcasts. Thanks for the great podcasts. Please keep it up. Well, thanks for that pointer and suggestion, Michael. In the U.S. iTunes store, Baranova said, Amazing five stars. The most professional and helpful podcast out there. Just amazing how generous Carl is. This is my first review for any podcast prompted by the level of quality of advice and the genuine concern for us who are just trying to deal with life day by day. It should be advertised on CNN and in public schools. No nonsense, nothing promotional, just wisdom from a brilliant researcher based on his experience and study. Well, thanks ever so much for all of that, Maranova. Very flattering advice for the podcast. Also in the U.S. iTunes store, CMT with two kids writes, Love Life Habits, five stars. I'm so glad I stumbled on these podcasts. Carl, you're fantastic and I love your voice. It is so soothing and I'm able to decompress with it. I'm in the process of downloading all of them so I can hear them over and over again. Keep up the great work. In the Canadian iTunes store, Steve says, a fantastic podcast, five stars. While not all of the podcasts are on topics important to my life, the ones that are are full of great little tips. I listen to the podcast at work as a part of my daily commute, and it's a wonderful way to pass the time and enrich my life simultaneously. Well, thanks so much, Steve, for that, and all of you for the feedback that you've provided. I'd like to again remind you to go to the Facebook page, that's facebook.com slash lifehabits, as well as to send me an email about your context of use, how, when, and where you listen to this podcast. That would be really helpful. That's it for this episode. We'll talk to you all next time, and bye for now.